Now we've discussed the topology brush to grab new geometry from a surface, and that's basically just drawing geometry on a surface. And we've also talked about using insert mesh topology and using edge extrusion to grab new topology as well. Let's continue that discussion. Let's go down here to our subtool. We've got our body selected. And let's say I want to pull off a shoulder pad on this person. So what I can do is I can actually go through here and I can control mask out a little section here using the pre-existing geometry. And I can go over here to extract. So it's subtool extract. If I hit extract, that's going to give us a preview. And essentially what it's doing is taking that geometry that exists. If we turn on polyframe here, and hit extract. Uh, you're not going to see the polyframe just yet until we hit accept, but if we hit extract is going to give us a preview of what that mesh is going to look like based on the smoothness, the thickness, and if we have double uh, turned on. So if we go over here and we turn up the smoothness and we hit extract, it'll smooth this out. And in fact, if we turn on this open circle and we hit extract, that's going to make it even smoother. We'll talk more about closed circle, which is essentially smoothing but maintaining volumes, and then open circle, which is smoothing and not maintaining volumes, but really smoothing your surface, uh, the difference between those. So you can see very quickly I can hit this mask something, hit extract, and if I want to mess with this actual geometry, I can hit accept, and now I'm going to have my original mesh here. If I go into solo mode, the mask is still there. If I don't want it there, I just control drag, and then I have my extracted thickness here, which, again, still has the mask on there. So I'm going to control drag that out and then go into polyframe here. And you're going to see essentially what it did is we have our original geometry here. If I alt tap the body and go into solo mode, you see this kind of dynamesh topology. And then we go over here to the extraction. It's still dynamesh topology. So it's not great topology, but at least we have some geometry here. So you can now go through here and you can hit W. You can alt tap here. You can turn on local sim, you can scale along that axis here if you want. You can go up here, you can hold down control shift, switch over to clip curve, and you can clip shapes through there. You can grab a clay brush, you can go through here and you can sculpt on this. So very quickly, you can go through here with all the things you know how to do with, with sculpting, and go through here and just kind of refine the shoulder pad here. However, there's some other methods. So let's go ahead and say, let's take this extraction. We'll go ahead and hit delete. And if we go through here now, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this entire character off, go into solo mode. Let's turn on polyframe. I'm going to again mask this area out. And if I go through here and I hit control W, that's going to give me a poly group, but these edges are going to be pretty jagged. So if I want a nice clean cut through here, one thing I can do is I get the comma key. We talked about this before, go into brush, smooth, smooth groups. And then now when I hold down shift, it'll just smooth that polygroup border. So that'll go ahead and smooth this out if I want to. Alternatively, if I hit control Z, I can go down here to masking. We'll do our groups border, mask by features. Control tap to invert that. And then we can go here to deformation. And we can run a polish. And that'll smooth it out. But I like to do a polish by features open circle. And that'll really smooth that line out. So now we get a nice clean cut through here. The problem is this geometry is still pretty bad. It's still just jagged, triangulated, dynamesh geometry, which is okay. And in fact, what I can do now, if I go in here to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, I just have a mesh here and I can go back into extract if I want and say extract. It's going to say, uh, do you want to continue? Say okay. And that'll go ahead and extract that topology. So if we hit accept, you're going to see we have new extracted topology based on that visible geometry that we had. So let's talk about more some of our alternatives here. Let's go ahead and delete those two. And then we'll go back to our character here, duplicate him off. Another way to get a little bit of a cleaner cut is to go through here, mask, and then say geometry, edge loop, mask border. So if I control drag now, you're going to see uh, it just put basically put a slice through that entire edge. So that seemed to work pretty well. And I can do the exact same process. However, another thing I can do, hold down control shift, isolate this geometry, do a geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And if I want better geometry on this mesh, all I need to do is go down here to Ziri Mesher, go in here to half, hit Ziri Mesh. And that basically tells it whatever the poly count was, drop it in half and then Ziri Mesh. So I can keep hitting Ziri Mesh. It'll give us new geometry. And at this point, I can go through here and I can say extract this geo, or I can go to my Z modeler brush, BZM, hover over face, Q mesh, polygroup all, pull this out. 
And that'll give us much cleaner geometry, much more usable geometry to go through here and say like hover over an edge, space bar, bevel, edge loop complete. Uh, go through here, hold down Alt, paint through here, say Q mesh poly group all, pull this through, go into crease, PG to crease all my poly groups here. Change our dynamic subdivision here to two or three, our crease level to two. And again, we get a very nice modeled result. Now there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with Ziri Mesher. In fact, you can retopologize an entire character here. So if we take this character and say, duplicate him off, let's go into solo mode, turn on polyframe. You see we have a character here. If we go back down here to Ziri Mesher, there's some options in here. So we can say, use poly paint. The color density set to two by default. Uh, this is all just a white, let's go ahead and turn off the line here. Uh, just white verts on this character. If it's not, just go up here to color, turn on RGB 100%, color, fill object, all white. So now if we go over here, we can say color density. If I wanna say color density of two, uh, that's gonna change my color to a light pink. And I can go through here and I can start painting. Let's turn off Z add. I can paint where I might want my character to have a little bit more polygons. And if I change my color density to say 0.75, that's gonna turn it to a light blue. And now I can paint where I may not need as many polygons. Now I can also use control curve. You see there's a curve strength. So we can go to B, Z, M, or we can go to B, Z, R, and that's a Ziri measure guides. We can go through here and we can put guides on our character like where we want the, might, might want the polygons to follow. But what I prefer to do, let's turn, let's hold down control shift and go in here to slice curve, is you can actually use curves to dictate where our lines are gonna go. So, for example, if I slice right here on the neck, we'll go ahead and put a poly group right here. And we saw the poly paint there. If I turn off polyframe, you see this is still poly painted. And if I go through here, I can put a slice through his armpit and then through his elbow. I wanna be careful to salt tap twice. So again, slice through his armpit. Or if I can't quite get a good enough angle on that, I can go through here again with mask lasso. I can mask out where I want my slice to go. I can go back in here to geometry, edge loop, edge loop mask border. And if I even need to clean this up, again, I have smooth groups still turned on. So I can go through here and smooth this group out. And actually, let me undo that because this I don't want to have mass. I'll hit, switch back to mask pin. We'll hold down control alt. It also might be easier if you hold down control shift and go in here to select lasso and you can grab the actual geo. So you can go through here very quickly and clean up what you don't need by holding down control shift and alt. Then again, we can hit control W to polygroup this and then hold down shift and smooth groups. The reason I'm smoothing groups is when Ziri Mesher goes to Ziri Mesh this, it's going to look at all of these aliased lines and try and build those in. I want a nice smooth transition, so I want to make sure those lines are nice and smooth. So now if I turn off polyframe here, you're going to see this is going to be 2x density. This is going to be 0.75x density. Because again, under Ziri Mesh, we used poly paint, color density, and we painted with RGB. So again, 0.75 and 2. When we turn on our polyframe here, we're gonna see, we're gonna have a polyframe line here and a polyframe line here. So when I go over here to Ziri Mesh, I'm gonna say, keep groups, keep my poly groups here, use poly paint, and that's gonna control my density. And the higher my adaptive size is, the more it's gonna to try to build in any edge changes. So you're gonna see any major changes in your geometry, it's gonna to try to build that in. If I drop this adaptive size down to zero, it's gonna to try to keep my quads nice and even. Also, when I go down here and say, okay, give me a target polygon count of maybe 12, which is 12,000 polygons, the lower this is, the closer it's gonna hit that target. The higher this is, it may add more polygons. So you know, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down to say nine. Now, when I turn on keep groups, it's gonna say smooth groups. Uh, our groups are already pretty smooth because we sliced and smoothed these out anyways. So I'm gonna say smooth groups down to zero. We don't need it to smooth anymore. And now I can hit Ziri Mesher. So if I turn on line here and we go back to a white polyframe, we turn on our polyframe, you're gonna see we get all brand new geometry. And it maintained 
our polygroup border. So if I want, I can keep doing, let's say, half and then zero mesh. And you can also hold down Alt and hit zero mesh, and that'll give you an alternate midline. Now you're going to see, this is we're getting very low res. If we want to, there's two ways we can get our details back. We have our original object here, so I'm going to hold down Shift, turn off all the eyeballs, tap this nameplate to turn this on. We'll turn this one on now. Go out of solo mode, and you see we have our new geometry and our original high res. So what I can do with our new geometry selected, and go down here to Geometry, Divide, and I can go up here to Project All, and that'll go ahead and project the detail. So I can divide, project, divide, project, and as long as this is showing and this is selected, if I go into solo mode here and turn on polyframe, you're going to see this is our original, this is our new geometry with subdivision history, and that's the result. Nice clean quad mesh to sculpt on with subdivision history, very useful. Alternatively, if I go all the way back down here to subdivision level 1, and I say delete higher, and I turn this one off, I can also use project history. So if I drag back through my history, back to where before we even started poly painting, you're going to see here's my original high res. I'm going to control tap this point in history. It's going to put a little white dot there. I'm going to go all the way forward. So here's my new geometry. So now I have a project history button. So I can hit control D, project history. And if it had poly paint data, I can project it. I'm going to say no. I'm going to hit control D. Project history, no. Control D, project history, and there we go. Now we have subdivision history and all of our detail back based on the geometry I had in history. So I can go ahead and Alt tap that, or Control tap that to get that out of my memory if I want to. And here I go. So now I have a brand new mesh here with our detail projected. So if I go out of solo mode here and then turn on all of my subtools here, this can be a good way. If you want it, let's go ahead and delete that remeshed one. So here's our DynaMesh version. So what we can do is I'm going to take the hands, hold down Shift, shoot those to the bottom, take the body, Shift, shoot those to the bottom, using this bent arrow and Shift. And we haven't gotten to Booleans yet, but I can go over here to Boolean. I can merge these down. So we go into solo mode here. You can see this is merged with the hand. Now instead of DynaMeshing, Again, we haven't gotten to Booleans yet, but I'm going to hit W. I'm going to go into the gear icon. I'm going to say Remesh by Union. And uh, it may tell you to turn off X symmetry, so just tap X. Do a quick Remesh by Union. And what that's going to do is sew this up wherever these things are together, because it's going to be a Union mesh. If I go through here and hold down Shift, you'll see these are all sewn together. So now that this is all one contiguous mesh, I can go through here and I can, again, go down here. To zero measure, we'll type in a target polygon count of five is fine. You have to have the size down quite a bit. And instead of playing with all these options, let's just hit zero mesh. Now another thing to keep in mind is that if you have X symmetry turned on, it will give you a symmetrical zero mesh. And I didn't have X turned on because I turned it off to do the Boolean. So I'm going to turn X symmetry back on, and then when I hit zero mesh, you'll see it goes quite a bit faster as well. So now you're going to see. This is all one mesh, and I got all brand new topology. So if again, if I want to get that detail back, I'm going to go back here to where I had my high res, control tap, select my new geometry. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe. Let's hit divide, project history, and then we'll hit divide, project history. And we got all of our detail back. We got brand new geometry. And now I can go back here to certain level one. We can smooth this out, or certain level two. We can smooth out that transition. And now these are welded together. We've got new geometry, and I didn't have to even DynaMesh. So all one nice contiguous mesh.